What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas representing Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. We're diving into some more 2019 fantasy football rankings, particularly the pass catchers, the wide receiver rankings for 2019 fantasy football. We covered rankings one through six last Friday. If you missed that, I would go watch that first. I will link it down below in the description as well as up here. Today we're going to cover parts 7, or ranking 7 through 12, 2019 fantasy football rankings. If you're watching this on Tuesday, that means Snacks, Animal, and I are 24 hours away from leaving for our road trip for Nashville for the NFL draft. That's a 13-hour drive. I don't know how the fuck I'm about to sit in a car with snacks for 13 hours. Say a prayer before you go to sleep tonight. If you're interested in watching all the behind-the-scenes bullshit that we muster up throughout the NFL Draft Weekend down in Nashville, make sure you're following us on Instagram, at Big Dogs Fantasy. Make sure you got notifications turned on for the channel because we're going to live stream each morning. Well, depending on whenever we wake up, which will probably be like 2 p.m. We're going to live stream each day that we're there in Nashville. That's when we'll announce the uh, Dynasty Subscriber League winners or the raffle winners Friday morning. So turn the notifications on. We're going to recap what happened in the draft in the day prior, talk about all the skill players that were picked. So a lot of rookie stuff going on. But right now we're talking 2019 fantasy football rankings, 2019 fantasy football wide receiver rankings. So let's get it. As always, if you enjoy the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing everything 2019 fantasy football from now through the offseason into next season. Or tank. So 2020 fantasy football, for being honest. The first guy up on my list, number seven. I actually, I think this is going to be a really, really good debate throughout the offseason. And I want you to comment down below who of these next two guys you're taking, Antonio Brown or Mike Evans. You might immediately say Antonio Brown. But I think the more you, you really dive into the numbers and do the analysis, I might be flip-flopping these numbers. I have Antonio Brown at number seven right now. But drop a comment down below. I want to know which one, if you're taking half PPR, you would rather have on your team for 2019 fantasy football. Is it? And give me, you know, give me some big facts behind it, why you're taking one or the other. When I did this video... Like two months ago, Antonio Brown was the wide receiver six. He is now the wide receiver seven on my board. He obviously moves over to Oakland and will be catching passes from Derek Carr in John Gruden's offense as opposed to Mike Tomlin's offense from Big Fat Ben. And I dropped Brown immediately down to like a late second, probably early third round pick when I saw the move happen. It's very rare that a wide receiver moves, right? Moves teams, you know, increases upon that success, let alone maintain what he had. I do think that Brown is going to see pretty good volume numbers. That is a pass heavy offense, right? Gruden's offenses have always been very pass heavy and he builds his offense around who his number one receiver is and he funnels targets there. We look at the other weapons on the team, right? Last year, Jared Cook led the team in targets with 101 targets. He's gone. He's in New Orleans. They bring in JJ Nelson. And they bring in Tyrell Williams to help stretch the field. But I'm definitely not concerned about either of those guys taking a significant share of Antonio Brown's targets in 2019. I actually really like this like this combo of wide receivers that they brought in between Brown, Williams, and J.J. Nelson. Because you look at J.J. Nelson, 4 2 8 40 yard dash. He's an absolute speed. So you look at Tyrell Williams, even though he's big at 6 foot 3, he runs a 4 4 8, 80th percentile weight adjusted speed score. So Brown will really, while those two are kind of on the outside running deep routes, Brown will have the entire middle of the field open where, you know, you saw Jared Cook dominate and get a ton of targets. So those, a lot of those are going to be going to Antonio Brown now where he can operate and really, you know, spread the middle of the field out. J.J. Nelson's highest target total was 74 back in 20. 16. Tyrell Williams also had a big 2016, 119 targets, but with Keenan Allen hurt for the entire year. Keenan Allen has been back for the last couple of years, and Tyrell Williams' target totals have gone down to 69 and 64, respectively, over the last two years. So the two of them together, I think reasonably in this Oakland offense, they might see 150 targets, right? Maybe 80 for Tyrell Williams, 65 for JJ Nelson, something like that. And then I just think about how fucking crazy John Gruden is, right? When he wants to use one guy, he will go all out to kind of funnel the ball that way. And for his backward thinking, as a lot of people want to state that John Gruden is, I actually think his offense last year was, was semi-progressive. And the fact that he went very pass heavy is, is the reason I say that. Oakland ranked 12th in the NFL last year, throwing the ball on 61.1% of their plays. And that was with literally no weapons in their offense. And I think they'll remain that pass heavy, if not 
much more. So you can give those two wide receivers, right? Nelson and Terrell Williams, about 150 targets. You know what? Let's boost that all the way up to 180 targets just to be safe. I highly doubt we see that, but let's go 180. They threw the ball 553 times last year. We'll put it down to 550 minus the 180 from those two wide receivers. You have 370 pass attempts left over. I'm just trying to do like reasonable projections here. So who the hell are those 370 targets going to last year, right? Maybe 90 to the running back position, maybe 90 to the tight end position. That still leaves 190 targets left over. And I'm sure there will be, you know, a few targets for whoever the wide receiver four and five are in that offense. But altogether, I still think Brown is looking at like a floor of 145, probably 150 targets and possibly up there in the 160 range. That entire offense is going to be centered around him. And I say that because you don't give up all the assets and, and that fat money that I gave him if that's not the case. You'll probably have to draft him as like a top six or seven fantasy wide receiver. So I do think there's risk there being with Carr. We really don't know who Derek Carr is. Yeah, he was two years removed from being like an MVP candidate and everyone likes to say that, but he was also awful last year. And Brown is getting up there in age and, and we really just don't know who Derek Carr is. And his efficiency numbers dipped last year, Carr's and Antonio Brown's. But he's still amongst the best in the league when it comes to just being a pure wide receiver. In my opinion, he's in the wide receiver 7 to 10 range, but that risk is definitely factored in with the ceiling in there. So that being said, if he's in the wide receiver 7 to 10 range, I will not reach you know, above that to grab him, likely will wait for him to fall to me. But let's move to number eight. Mike Evans, Tampa Bay Bucks. He was number eight last time I did the rankings. He remains number eight. In 2018, Mike Evans had arguably his best career season, right? From an efficiency standpoint, it certainly was. A year after finishing with just five touchdowns and literally a 20 game stretch without topping 100 receiving yards, caught 86 of 135 targets, 1,525 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns. He topped 100 yards, right? He missed out on topping 100 yards 20 straight times prior to 2018. Last year, he did it eight times. So in 50% of the games that he played last year, he went over the 100 receiving yard mark. Coming into 2018, prior to last year, Evans had a career catch rate of 53.7%. He upped that by a full 10% last year to 63.7%. He also upped his career yak by nearly 50% last year. His 17.7 yards per reception was not only a career high, but a major step up from his career 14.8. So he went from 14.8 yards per reception, career, last year up to 17.7. So three yards more per reception last year. And you look at 2019 and Evans is actually a really intriguing case study because there are a lot of variables going to this offseason for the Bucks, right? Both Dirk Cutter and Todd Munkin, their head coach and their offensive coordinator from last year are gone. Bruce Arians takes over as the head coach in Tampa Bay. Now, thanks to FF statistics, we can look at coaches, offense coordinators, whoever, and look at, you know, fantasy receivers and fantasy or any position and see how these positions finished under this specific coach during different time frames and whatnot. So Bruce Arians was the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh from 07 to 11. He was the OC in Indianapolis in 2012, and he was the head coach in Arizona from 2013 to 2017. Arians produced a plethora, y'all like that high-risk vocabulary, of fantasy wide receivers, you know, as is in his time as an OC or as a head coach. Fitzgerald was obviously a stud in Bruce Arians' final three years with the Cardinals. You look at the chart, that dip in 2014 was a result of, you know, Drew Stanton and Ryan Lindley being the quarterbacks in Arizona. Otherwise, Arians has produced a top 15 fantasy wide receiver nearly every single year that he's been running an offense. So if you exclude that 2014 season and his first year as the offensive coordinator back in Pitt, which really didn't even have a wide receiver finish that poorly, the wide receiver one in a Bruce Arians offense is averaging just under 90 receptions, 140 targets, about 1,160 receiving yards, 7.4 touchdowns. That wide receiver one has went over 1,000 receiving yards in eight of nine seasons. That would come out to an average of 205 fantasy points, which will typically in a given year net you a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. Now, those overall are not jaw-dropping statistics. If you're looking to draft Mike Evans, right, you want someone who's going to go higher than 1,160 receiving yards, seven and a half touchdowns, but that proves consistency year over year that he is funneling his wide receiver one targets. And there are, of course, players that went over those stats, right? Those are the average. I'm excited overall to see what Bruce Arians can do with Winston and just his offense overall because it's a very good offense on paper. The biggest key here though is Deshaun Jackson and Adam Humphreys leaving. That is a huge boost for Mike Evans' 2019 fantasy outlook. He's going to return to seeing 10 targets a game like he did prior to Deshaun Jackson, right? In 2015, 2016, before d came to the Bucks, he was averaging over 10 targets a game. A ton of those newly added targets that he's going to get back to his volume are going to be deep balls, right? Evans already got a ton of those. He paced the entire NFL in air yards last year, just last year, with Deshaun Jackson on the team. And he only saw 139 targets. His volume wasn't that high, but he still led the league in air yards. And you look at other wide receiver, wide receiver ones in their respective offenses, right? Elite fantasy wide 
wide receivers, Julio, AB, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, they were all pushing 170 targets. So he was seeing like 30 to 40 fewer targets than a lot of the other wide receivers, still putting up monster air yard numbers. And that was with Deshaun Jackson, who's also ranking in the top 25 among wide receivers in air yards and an average target distance of 18.9 yards, which was second in the entire NFL. Evans ranked second in the NFL with 26 catches of 20 plus yards and tied for second in the NFL in 40 plus yard catches. So I think people are underestimating one, just how good of a deep threat Mike Evans is. So people like to talk about his yak, right? And he can't really move with the ball in his hands. And that is the case, even though he improved that last year, he is a phenomenal deep threat. And you don't really think of it because he's such a big player. You think of him as more like a contested catch guy or like a red zone guy but he gets a ton of volume down the field. And with Arians and Jameis Winston combined together, I think he's gonna see so much volume there without Deshaun Jackson in the lineup. So it was a monster year. I will say, I will caveat this. He did have a big chunk of, of games. He had five separate games that he went under 60 receiving yards and did not score a touchdown. So those are pretty much weak killers for you, right? That's like five fantasy points, five separate times for Mike Evans last year. But he also had five games of 21 or more fantasy points last year. So. Technically, he was a little bit of a boomer bust player, but with Jackson gone, with Adam Humphreys gone, I think the volume will be raised enough that he won't really even be boomer bust. I think he will be consistently week over week, a high end wide receiver one. So I think wide receiver eight is pretty much the floor here. And there's not much risk baked in because we've seen him produce year over year over year over year. And I think his ceiling is ridiculously high. We've seen him have multiple years with tons of touchdowns. And now we just saw a year coming off of eight games of hundred plus receiving yards. So Mike Evans is my guy at wide receiver eight. I think after saying all this stuff out loud, he's probably going to move ahead of Antonio Brown for me for wide receiver seven. Again, I want you to drop a comment down below after hearing that, who you would take between the two guys, half PPR, and some big facts as to why. Again, if you're enjoying the video, also while you're down, while, la, 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 while you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, please. Um, very much appreciate it. Let's me know that you value all the hard work that I put into these videos and subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're on the podcast, same thing, y'all. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and leave a rating and review. It takes like four seconds. I don't care if it's five stars. I don't care if it's one star. Just do your man's a favor and um, give me some feedback, please. So next up on the list, Tyreek Hill, Kansas City Chiefs, was my wide receiver four when I did these rankings in like January, he's now the wide receiver nine. This is literally only because the off the field stuff, I'm not even gonna get into this because we have no idea what's gonna happen. I am filming this on Friday, April 19th. So by the time the weekend is up or by the time you guys watch this on Tuesday, it's very possible that something happened in the case because we just heard breaking news that the sun was pulled out of the house or some shit like that. So I'm not gonna go into it. This is more for like best ball. If you are drafting right now, this is about where I would probably take him in the order. But given the news that we heard today about with the sun, I'm probably fading him in best ball until we hear more. So I'm not gonna get into analysis with him right now. Adam Thielen is my number 10 wide receiver going into 2019 fantasy football. He was wide receiver 13 last time around. Oh, I also wanna say, if you wanna just skip to my top 25 wide receivers overall, there will be a link down below. And that will take you to a page that will give you access to my top 25 wide receivers in standard half PPR and PPR. But there's no analysis on there. They're just strictly my rankings in a sheet. So I just wanted to caveat that as well. In my opinion, there's a pretty large drop off in tiers from Evans to Adam Thielen, or you know maybe Brown to Adam Thielen now. And if you're interested in getting my tiers, those you're gonna have to find in my draft guide. It's available for pre-order right now. You'll get 20% off pre-order price over the next two weeks if you do cop it now. BigDogsDraftGuide.com, my top 250 rankings, all the positional rankings broken down by tiers as well. It's like 8,000 other cool, valuable pieces of information in that guide. I don't wanna to take too long plugging it, but BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Like I said, Adam Thielen falls off a little bit when it comes to tiers. I'd be lying if I said Adam Thielen's doesn't scare you, man. We know the story, right? Thielen was an absolute, he was a goat last year from weeks one to eight, followed by a massive fall off over the second half of the year. These are the splits, man. It's ugly. 21 fantasy points a game down to 10 and a half in half PPR. In PPR, it's 25 and a half down to 12.9. Shit got ugly, man. And I really, I don't know what happened. He was averaging 9.25 catches, 115 receiving yards, 0.75 touchdowns a game from weeks one to eight. He began the year with eight straight 100 yard receiving games. He was by far and away the most valuable player in fantasy football. And then the second half of the year happened. 10 and a half fantasy points per game, kept him at a cool wide receiver 26 in fantasy over the second half of the year. So if you're playing in 10 team leagues, that's like a low end wide receiver three, 12 team leagues, you are a high end wide receiver three from Thielen. So he starts off the year with eight straight 100 yard receiving games. Then the second eight games, he surpasses 80 receiving yards just once. And some of his individual game lines, 22 yards, 66 yards, 28 yards, 19 yards, 38 yards. And I literally don't know what to make of it. 
If anyone out here with some kind of behind the scenes knowledge, Minnesota Vikings, you know, fucking insider, some shit, please bless us with that information down below because I really, I'm someone who prides myself on getting into the big facts and being able to uncover, unpeel the onion of what the fuck happened in Minnesota last year, but I can't do it without him telling it. I don't know what happened, so please, please paint us a picture down below in the comment section. I started making charts. I started just going into random ass fucking numbers trying to figure out what it was. So I, I, you know, I was breaking down Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen. I was looking at weeks one to eight. He was amazing. And the reason I split up nine to 14 and 15 to 17, because their offensive coordinator, I, I don't know why the name is slipping my mind right now, but I know Kevin Stefanski took over their interim OC, who is now their permanent OC, took over weeks 15 to 17. And we know they went very run heavy. Damn, this is pissing me off. Who was the Vikings offensive coordinator? Uh, Di Filippo. Di Filippo was the OC from 9 to 14. Then Stefanski took over 15 to 17. And I wanted to see like what was the change in philosophy. Obviously, the volume went down a little bit, but like I don't know. The only like really recognizable thing on here, Kirk Cousins threw a lot more deep balls, or his average depth of throw much higher over the last three weeks, although he had less deep targets per game, although his deep ball percentage was higher. So basically, what that's saying is the volume of passing overall was down over the last three weeks but a much higher percentage of those passes were deep balls. And you could see that by Adam Thielen's numbers, the last row in that chart, his average depth of throw went from 9.7, 9.6 over the first 14 weeks, all the way up to 14.2. His deep ball percentage more than doubled over the last three weeks. 25% of his targets were deep balls. He started running less routes from the slot. And I was looking into Stefan Diggs to see what, like, you know, was there a scheme change or some shit? I couldn't figure it out. So you know what? I, I, I just, I'm still a believer in this big slot receiver being a very big part of the offense. I think Kirk Cousins still likes Adam Thielen. Like he was still targeting him a lot. It's a messy situation. So like I said, there is a teardrop and like Mike Evans is someone I would think about within, you know, a mid second round, late second round pick. And then Thielen probably falls like a late third round for me. So it, it's definitely risky. That's where he falls. Let's move on to number 11. I got to start fucking reading these blog posts over before I jump into the video because I have T.Y. Hilton is number 11, but after reading Adam Thielen's thing, T.Y. Hilton's going to jump up to number 10 and Thielen's going to move back to 11. So T.Y. was 11 last time. He is now going to be 10, although I'm, you know, jumping around and shit right now. So we have T.Y. Hilton that actually is wide receiver 10. Hilton has done nothing but prove people wrong over and over and over again that he is a really good wide receiver in the NFL and a very good playmaker. With Andrew Luck finally back for a full 16 games, T.Y. Hilton replicated his numbers from 2016 when he was a top five fantasy wide receiver. He actually improved upon them. He was actually better. Look at the numbers. 2016, again, that was the year that he broke out and was a top five fantasy wide receiver. Then people started drafting him in the top 15 overall. He was a top 15 pick overall in 2017 drafts as it crept closer to the season start when we started hearing that Andrew Luck might not be ready for week one, right? Then the ADP started pushing back. But as far as everyone else was concerned, T.Y. Hilton was a top 15 pick going into 2017. Then you look at his per game numbers last year. Receptions per game was a tiny bit lower, but yards per game was right there. Touchdowns per game were higher. Fantasy points per game were actually higher. So in the year that he was going to be picked as a top 15 fantasy wide receiver, he played just as well last year as he did in that year. People just want so bad for T.Y. not to be a top wide receiver. And all he does is continue to be just that. He's tethered to an elite quarterback with an elite offensive line. And I understand people's hesitations right now because you probably think Indy will draft a wide receiver early on in the draft, but that's pure speculation. I love Hilton at the third, fourth round turn in best ball drafts. I'm trying to scoop him there in almost every one of my drafts as long as Marlon Mack, his teammate, is off the board already. We know exactly what we're getting from T.Y. Hilton with luck as his quarterback in an offense is going to be prolific. They were a top five scoring offense in the NFL last year. They were the fifth highest scoring offense, 27.1 points per game. And absolutely nothing about their team says regression. And, and back to the, to the rookie wide receiver. I don't think they're going to use a first round pick on a rookie wide receiver. I think they're probably going to plug up the defensive line, uh, the D tackle spot with their first round pick. I think they're 26th overall. Maybe they use a second round pick on a rookie wide receiver. That's fine. They use a second, third, fourth round pick on a rookie wide receiver. That receiver is not going to come in and take over T.Y. Hilton's like role. He's not going to become the wide receiver one. Maybe in 2020, we could talk about it when that comes, but Hilton in season long this year, I absolutely love. Like I said, this offense, nothing about this offense says regression. If anything, I think they're going to get better this year because they're a young team. All five of their offensive line starters are coming back. Continuity is huge there. And you look at the other four teams that were ahead of them, right? There are flags for regression on every one of them. KC, 
What happens with Tyreek Hill? If he misses time, that offense takes a big hit. Do they have a real running back there in KC? Look at the Rams. Extremely suspect finish at the end of the year last year down the stretch. And now they lose Roger Saffold on the line. Gurley's arthritis in his knee is definitely a huge concern. So there's definitely parts of regression coming for that Rams offense. The Saints should be great again. That's the only one I can't really make a reasonable case for having a step back. Max Unger, they did lose him on the line, which is a big piece, but they replaced him with Nick Easton. So, and then New England, they don't have any wide receivers. Gronk retires. Brady was already not good last year. So it's in entirely possible that the Colts jump every one of those offenses and actually become the highest scoring team in the NFL next year. And you should want, without hesitation, the wide receiver one on the NFL's highest scoring team, if that's the case. I don't care if they draft a wide receiver one in the first round, actually, this year. You know, I, I'm saying, you know, maybe they'll draft one in the second, third round. Even if they take one in the first round, Hilton is still the guy. Him and Luck have a great rapport. So don't think too hard about Hilton. Wide receiver one, prolific offense, prolific offensive line, prolific quarterback. It doesn't have to be that difficult. So to wrap up this video, we're jumping to the number 12 spot. This was a difficult one. Of the wide receivers, not picked already, not off the board, I want to know who you guys would have at the 12 spot. There's Stefan Diggs, there's AJ Green, there's Keenan Allen, there's Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks. I mean, it's a list of good but risky wide receivers in my opinion. So I want to know who of the guys I didn't take yet you think is going to be number 12. So drop the comment down below. One, I want to know Evans versus Brown. Hit me with some big facts and then let me know who you would have as the number 12 receiver. I think the popular pick will probably be AJ Green, but I, I don't know. I, I just don't really want AJ Green. That Cincinnati offense, we have no idea what to expect from it. He was wide receiver 15 on a points per game basis last year prior to getting hurt. We we had a Tyler Boyd breakout. Geo and Joe Mixon still there. So other pass catchers, they bring Tyler Eifert back. We have no idea what Andy Dalton's going to do. Again, new head coach, new offensive coordinator who have never even held a coordinator position, neither of them in their careers. So this offense, while it's going to be different without, you know, Marvin Lewis as the head coach, extra media Marvin, as we like to call him here at, at the HQ, he's gone. So it's going to be different, but there's no promise that it's going to be better. So AJ Green is, is risky in my opinion, of course, getting older, he's gonna be 31, coming off this another serious injury. So I don't like AJ Green as much. I'm gonna go with Keenan Allen here as my wide receiver 12. And fuck Keenan Allen, to be honest with you. Guy scores in week one, scores a touchdown in week one, and then he literally doesn't score another touchdown until week 10, until week 10, and then he scores in five straight games. I traded him literally week nine last year because I was fed up with his fucking bullshit. I kept giving him one more game, one more game, one more game. Although I did swap him for like Travis Kelsey, so it all ended up working out. God bless you, Chris Radici. He wound it up, wound it up, wind it up. Finishing with 14 fantasy points per game, half PPR on his way to a wide receiver 12 fantasy finish. 97 catches, 1196 yards, six touchdowns. Again, it's a low touchdown total for Keenan Allen. What else is new? That is like the story of his career pretty much thus far. Over the last five years, his touchdown totals, six, six, zero, four, four. Six last year, six, zero, four, four. Obviously the zeros because he was hurt. He had eight in his rookie season, but that was back in 20, was that 2013, 2012 at this point. They have Hunter Henry come and bike, great red zone weapon, end zone target. Mike Williams coming off a 10 touchdown season. Melvin Gordon getting in the end zone at a historic rate. It's unlikely, while it's impossible to predict touchdowns are a very volatile stat, unlikely that we see him hit career marks, right? The six touchdowns is probably the right projection. The other thing is like receptions have always been Allen's calling card, right? You're always like, okay, I like Keenan Allen a lot in these half PPR or full PPR leagues because he always catches so many balls, so many targets, blah, 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 blah. His 97 receptions last year were really not that close to rivaling the league lead, right? You have a lot of players catching a lot of passes now. Last year, we had eight wide receivers, not named Keenan Allen, that cracked 100 receptions in the season. So it's like Keenan Allen isn't really gonna be a touchdown scorer. And while the targets and receptions are gonna be there, the advantage that he used to have of being like the highest reception guy in the NFL or rivaling, you know, or battling for the number one spot is not really that big of an advantage because we had eight other guys crack 100 receptions. So I like Keenan as, as a high floor, but not that high of a ceiling wide receiver 12. And I think the other guys are just a little bit risky between Diggs and that, and that whole entire offense going a lot more lower volume and passing. AJ Green, I already kind of mentioned him. Amari Cooper had some really boom games last year, but he also had a lot of bust games. So I think he's still risky in Dallas, still going to be a very run heavy offense there behind Zeke. So it's like all these guys outside of the 12, I mean, I don't know the top eight or nine, or maybe even like 10 wide receivers are guys that I want to have on my team because I think there's a big tier drop off. And again, if you want to grab my tiers, that will be in the season long guide, which will drop later this summer, but you can pre-order now for a discount price, 20% off over the next two weeks. 
BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Make sure if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Make sure you turn that notification bell on right below the video if you want to catch our live streams while we're down in Nashville for the NFL Draft. Make sure you're following us on Instagram because we will be probably posting all the behind the scenes and the stories and whatnot while we are down there. I love y'all. Thanks for sticking around this far if you have. And I'll see y'all probably on Thursday or Friday. So, peace.